Hey guys, welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery down here. Um, what I'm, you're about to listen to is actually uh, the first strategy session that someone actually invi- accepted my invitation. Uh, this is a podiatrist uh, from Canada. And so we are going to start talking a little bit about uh, his unique issues, which are probably not really unique to anyone in the States. Uh, it talks about how to create content how to be on time and be efficient and and we're able to kind of share different ideas with each other uh, and uh, things like that. So it's going to start out with a little bit about him and kind of what's working for him currently and then we're going to get into the the practice management and the ideas of making content uh, a little bit later on. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Once again, if you want to be part of this and do your own kind of, I call it a strategy session until I think of a better name, uh, I put a little link underneath here, just uh, sign up for your time and then we'll we'll chat. Okay, thanks, guys. So, uh, tell me. So, tell me a little bit about your your practice there in in the in the, on the West Coast and how are things going and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, predominantly do mostly sport, podiatric, and sports medicine. You know, orthotics, pretty much. I mean, I was did surgical residency many moons ago decided to not do it anymore. Um, just do mostly that. Not a lot of CNC stuff. Uh, some, but you know, four or five in a day is a big day for me doing CNC where a lot of people that's, that's like the first hour of their day. Yeah. Um, so mostly that kind of pro- stuff. Um, I have a main office in, da- have you ever been to Vancouver? No. So I have a main office in downtown Vancouver, not in the city core, like probably two to three minute drive from the core of downtown. Um, so just as you kind of across from a hospital, they're going to knock down in the next, who knows, they say six years, but we'll see. doesn't matter. Yeah. doesn't really affect me. So in a medical building. Um, so I work there all day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, I do uh Wednesday and Friday, I do some satellite clinics. So usually Wednesday all day, a long day, like eight till eight almost, because I go to wow. two different clinics. And uh, well, that also changed because of COVID. And um, Friday, just usually the morning, but today starting later, I'm actually working this afternoon too. So it's kind of like a flex, Friday's kind of a flex day. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I have another guy that works in my office on Wednesday, so he does mostly, most of the CNC, general patients. He'll even, I even let him do all the ingrown nails he wants to do. Yeah, uh, you like the sports. Now, Sorry? yeah, you, said you like the sports. So you, you mentioned a little bit about your workflows. What, what, what's going well with your workflows? What are a couple of the workflows that are working really well for you? I, I think it's good. I mean, just getting the patients in, getting them out, you know. Um, uh the you know you can always be faster at doing it but then here they pay out of their pocket to see us it's not even though canada socialized medicine for the last 17 18 years they've they went away from socialized medicine for podiatry chiro massage physio so patients now pay wow Um, okay yeah so if you go to your gp you don't pay uh, if you go to the rheumatologist, you don't pay. Um, but we still can order here. We're allowed to order all blood tests, all scans. That's covered under the plan, thankfully so. So we can order an ultrasound. We can order an MRI, x-rays. That's covered by the BC Medical Plan, the government plan. And uh, like, you know, if you have to order blood work, CBC or whatever, diabetes, something, that's all covered by the government plan. So at least that part of it's good. And uh, like, so if you do a, a shockwave or cortisone injection or orthotics, none of that's covered. No, private health. It's all under private health. So most insurance companies here, the shockwave you would just do as an office visit. Uh, most of the shockwave, I I also work in a couple of physio clinics. Okay. So today I'm going to a physio clinic in the morning and this afternoon also. Um, so I just let them do that kind of stuff because I'd rather let them do that stuff and refer me to patients for other stuff. So it probably works out in the end versus buying a shockwave type of machine. Um, so yeah, so shockwave, cortisone, 
orthotics, it's covered by Blue Cross, for example. So you could bill it as an office visit. Orthotics are covered by Blue Cross. You know, upwards of, I mean, a good plan is like 400 bucks. They'll cover just for the orthotics themselves. Um, so yeah, it's not so bad. I mean, patients, you can just build Blue Cross. I choose not, most of us choose not to do that. So we actually make, have the patient pay us and then submit to the plan. Okay. So we keep the cash flows a little bit better. It's a totally different, you know, animal than when I, when I, when I'm used to it. So it's nice to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like the guys in the States who are basically just pay me and call the day, right? Where you bill your HMOs and all that stuff. We could do that. I could bill these insurance companies and not a lot of people do um, that I know of, like my close friends don't. So this way, you know, you're billing 165 bucks for a consultation. You're getting your 165 bucks a day. You give them a receipt, a nice receipt, and they get back 80% from their insurance company. Well, it depends. Yeah, obviously, you know, if it's Blue Cross, they'll get Blue Cross first visit will cover up to 180 bucks on a first visit and subsequent about a hundred, I think 80 bucks or a hundred. Yeah. Um, any, uh, you say you do a lot of orthotics, any, any tips for those that are starting out that want to do more orthotics? Cause no insurance covers them here in Massachusetts either. And uh, do you do them first line? Do you try other things first? Is it based on, is it based on like deformity, like heel valgus or something like that? Or yeah. is it diagnosis? How do you, what, what are some tips for people that are listening? Some of the younger docs? Well, obviously you base it on your, what have they had done already? Because a lot of times some patients have tried something already before they come in, most. And if it's not just telling them to change your shoes and do some exercises or maybe go to physio or maybe like you said, some medications, whatever type, be it injection or whatever, tape the foot, put a taping on their foot and uh, see if that helps. That's some what I mean too. Yep. If the taping helps, orthotics will help, right? Is that what you say? It? Pretty much, you know, and some patients will say, hey, I've got an orth uh, over-the-counter insert, helped quite a bit, but only lasted for about three or four weeks, which because it doesn't really fit their foot, it's not supportive, it's not supportive enough or rigid enough, I'm not saying you have to have something rigid, but it doesn't give them that control. So yeah, that's cool. uh, pretty much. It's not, yeah, I, I, yeah. And you, you mentioned a little bit referrals are going well for you. Do you get them from the physios or from the PCPs? Where do you tend to get your referrals from? I may have been practicing long enough. Okay. So when it first started, it was probably uh, your, your physicians, your primary care physicians, as you. Uh, um, so, and then you then you get your patient referrals and, you know, your friends or whatever, um, or your friends' friends. Um now it's kind of expanded. So I still get the primary care physician, get that quite a bit. Uh, a lot of physios, um, chiros, uh, you know, even massage therapists, but that's more the ones that work in the clinic than just, well, no, that's not totally true. So massage therapists. So yeah, just kind of, you know, I mean, personally, I don't, my office isn't set up but, uh, for that, but like to do laser ultrasound shockwave. Yes, it's, extra money but you got to buy a machine and you've kind of taken that job away from the physios i, I kind of looked at it that way they do so that's, why I didn't go, that's why i didn't go that route and so and now uh, subsequently 15 years i mean i'm practicing too long but uh, 15 years later in my practice i became like started working in these physio clinics hmm. so now they refer to me and i refer back i mean they they get as much referrals from me as i get from them because I get the doctor, the doctor sends it to me, I send it to, to the physio. The doctor will also send it to the physio who then will send it back to me type of thing. So it works. And it's also nice because you get, if you're in a clinic with them or if you got a relationship, you got to, um, you work together. So, yeah. you know, get them to check the back. Uh, we can't check backs, right? We can't check knees, get them to do those things. Scoliosis, measure the leg length. You know, that kind of stuff. It's great. Yeah, but then good. we can't measure leg length, but yeah. And, and a couple of things you said we were, you know, you wanted, we, we were going to chat about, you mentioned about, you know, patient information, articles, blogs, videos, and then staying on time. So uh, tell me like what's working for you now or how's it going and, and what kind of, let's brainstorm together. 
Yeah, I was just looking to just, uh, mod you know, add to my website more writing some content. The guy who's in charge or who takes care of my websites, like keeps bugging me, write more articles, write more articles, a video or something of that sort. And yes, I can do it. it does take, you know, two, two weeks of thinking about it and half an hour to write it, you know, um, just called procrastination probably. Um, so I know you have a ton of content and I was like, you know, where'd you get that? Or can we borrow that? <laughs> can I just take yours and move it over to mine? Just kidding. Um, you know, uh, so that was kind of more content and then just trying to be more efficient in the office. It's kind of, I was listening to someone the other day on a talk and he was saying like, you know, to do the full examination of the patient, it should take you like 20 to 30 minutes, you, you know, and I'm like, that's pretty fast. You know, if you're doing walking, standing, on the table, discussing, getting their information. Like I found actually now what I do because of COVID, I try to call the patients in advance, the new patients. So it kind of saves that first five, seven minutes in the office. Um, and also less FaceTime, talk to them, get a relationship going. And I think that's actually helped quite a bit. You have, uh, so let's, let's first talk about the patient information. Uh, and then we'll go on to how to stay on time or how to make better use of the time. Um, so I, I've, I've, I've like messed up a lot of different ways of trying to make content. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out if you are a better talker or if you're a better writer. I'm not a very good writer. I don't like to write. Yeah, me too. Okay. But I am okay talking and you probably talk all day long about your conditions with your patients. Right. So a real cheap way to do it is you bring a little voice recorder, or take your phone, and when you're going to do your spiel, you're going to say, you know, Mrs. Jones, I'm going to explain plantar fasciitis, but I have a lot of patients that might like to hear the same thing. So I'm going to record it. And so when you're doing your spiel on Halix Limitus, orthotics, and you do that same spiel probably over and over and over again. Right. And, and you, if you get that, so what, what you do is then you send it off and um, there's a couple of ways you can just get it transcribed. Yep. And then I use someone on Fiverr and I have them edit it. So basically someone on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, they can, they'll transcribe it, maybe cost you 10, 20 bucks, then they'll edit it and they'll put it into like a little book, book format. And I use someone else on Fiverr. I'll send you the link afterwards. Sure. And, and all my books look the same. It's because I have the same guy in Fiverr do it. Right. So he takes the Word document, he adds the images, and, and, and that's about it. And so right. you would, you know, and I would start with, and I, and I, this is my struggle is I try to like swallow the whole world at once. I would say pick the main three diagnoses or main one that you like the best. If it's plantar fasciitis, do that one first or then right. Achilles and then whatever you like. Do, you start with one, get the process and then like do that. That would be a good. And then the other key is to reutilize content. So yeah. what you could do is you could actually take that audio and put that right on your website. You know, they might not want to watch the video. So you could just do the audio download call it like a podcast episode. Uh, you could take that same transcription and put that on your website. Oh, yeah. You know, re you, you reutilizing the content as much as possible, I think is key. And then, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm an idea a minute guy. I really like to do slides. Slides are super easy for me. So I take Google Slides, um, those it's same like comments. Google? Hmm, Google Slides. Oh, just from Google. Um, so yeah, I take the images from Google, but I'm what I, it's like, it's like PowerPoint. Right. And so I basically take some of the main ideas, not many words, and I put them into images. And those are the things I call my patient presentations. And so that's what I go through with patients about my, and I'll, I can send you a link to those as well. Sure. Oh, I see. So like take a picture of that foot with the plantar fasciitis and someone yeah. pushing on it and then give them all the. This is who, what, when, where, and why. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what I do every every single day. And 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 so reutilizing that content, you can very easily make an ebook. You can certainly have mine if you want. I haven't. No one's asked me, but maybe I'll make them as a product. But they're super easy, and, and you could just change the names on them. That would be fine right. too. But I might have a different way of treating than you do. So you'd have to edit them quite a bit. 
Yeah, I know. I noticed that. I did. I saw some of your little flow charts. I'm like, you know, like uh, I was at a, I used to be president of the CPMA, the Canadian Podiatric Medical Association, for uh, six years. I'm still on the board. I'm still past acting past president for the last four years. And I was sitting with uh, Kathy from um, Western University, Kathy Southerfield. And uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, we were talking about, oh, there's a lecture this woman was giving. I don't know who she was, forget, on stress fractures. And she said that the primary way to diagnose a stress fracture is MRI. And I'm like, you know, like imaging wise, I mean, other than feel and what they do. And I'm like, I look at Kathy and I start laughing because she's been to Canada. We invited her up. She came to the here and had invited her up to come visit for one of our conferences and stuff and give a little chit, give a chat and stuff like that. And she looks at me, she goes, yeah, I guess that really happens in your province. I'm like, oh yeah, we can get an MRI just like that. Well, patients have to pay for it. They're not going to do it. They can get it for free. So they're not going to pay for it. She goes, you guys are clinically, because you have to use a lot. I mean, we have the x-rays. Okay, that we could order, obviously. But she goes, you guys have to really be clinically sound because you have to do a lot of your stuff by touch and feel because your imaging takes quite a while. I mean, now they do MRIs in our area 24-7, 365. Uh, that is for almost 3 million people. <laughs> you know, and how many MRIs would you actually have in 3 million? You know, there's probably, mm. right. Mm. So like, you know, I had a patient, she waited a month, but a bad workers comp injury and she still had to wait like a, almost took two months to get it. Yep. Yep. You have to be a better clinician that way. So yeah. So yeah. So then I go, well, what's wrong with the old bone scan and an x-ray and a tuning fork? You know, I was thinking tuning fork and an x-ray, but yeah, yeah. I use the tuning fork so much. Yep. It's great. And I remember a physio telling me when she was doing her training in Australia, that the orthopods would send them all down to the, into the physio clinic, put the ultrasound unit on the foot and see if they had, or, or the leg and see if they had a stress fracture. It's a lot easier, you know. Well, can you use an ultrasound unit? It's better than a tuning fork because the more yeah. vibration. Yeah, we have ultrasound. We use ultrasound all day long. I don't know how to practice without it. Yeah, no, not diagnostic ultrasound like the ones that physio would use for. Oh, the therapeutic healing. ones. That's cool. Yeah, because it's it's better than a in a than a tuning fork. Yeah, it's just more focused. It's, yeah. Right, it's more focused. It's got higher vibrations or frequency. Interesting. And so they'll put you put don't hold it in place. You have to move it because you'll burn the foot. So you put it to the highest level. Mm -hmm. And you just move it around and the person will jump. Now, one time this physio did and this guy jumped. She called me up. She goes, I want you to see this guy. I think he's got a stress fracture. Saw him, ordered a, a bone scan, I think. And uh, yeah, it was a bone scan, x-ray and a bone scan. And he didn't. He probably had a stress reaction, but he didn't have it. So it's one time that it's not always true, but yeah, works pretty good. You know, Joseph, I'm thinking about something even easier than what I just mentioned to you. Um, if you're kind of high tech like I am, what you do is you open a Zoom meeting with me. We could schedule a time and I could ask you and interview you about plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. And with this thing called Zoom, it's linked to something called, um, what's it called? Otter, O-T-T-E-R dot I-O. So actually, just so you know, this is being transcribed as we speak automatically oh, yeah. for free up to 30 oh. minutes. Oh. So like I could take this and I can add this transcript to our video. And so, you know, I, we could set a time, we could do a trial one on plantar fasciitis, have it transcribed, and then we could just give it over to someone in, in Fiverr and it's done for you. I, that's, I'm all about like optimizing. I don't like to waste time. So right. that might be even an easier way than paying a transcriptionist. Yeah. We could cool. set up another one. I'll interview you on a topic and we'll yeah. try to get the first one through. Then once you figure it out, you know, do it. Sure. Just open up Zoom. I'll teach you how to do that stuff. It's pretty easy. All right. That sounds pretty cool, actually. My um, uh, internet guy would be very happy with me to do that. <laughs> um, what else was I, an, another way of getting blogs and videos is um, I I um I have my cell phone and I used to do this a lot more, but you can just record right on your cell phone. Have your staff record you as you're talking. I, I tried doing like a tripod and like the Tobro, all that stuff, but I find it easier just to have your staff record you treating patients. That's a good way to get. Uh, videos and then you can either upload them directly to YouTube if you have a YouTube channel. I find that's easiest, and then you download it. You know, it's not you're not going to make it public, and you can edit it afterwards. 
That's an easy way to get some video content. And what I tend to do is like Zoom meetings or recording the screen. That's a lot easier for me. So I will uh, like have my PowerPoint and I record the screen with me talking. That's the easiest way. That's why I do the majority of my stuff because I, I do it between patients in the office. Now that one sounds pretty, a lot easier, a lot more fun to do. <laughs> recording, which one? Recording in your office? Well, the recording the office thing is great, but you got to ask the patients and all they got to... Or who, recording this way. Or recording this way is also... Both are pretty good, I think, you know. I think doing a little bit of both because patient... People like to see a patient, you know. You can just show yeah. them. The, you can and, just show the feed anyway, right? And, and frankly, what I do on my Google, I have Google Chrome and I have like a power... Uh, Google Slides. And I just, when I think of new ideas, I put them up there and I just like have it as almost like as a list. And then every so often, I'll just put up a slide, I'll talk a little bit about it, put up another slide, talk about it. And then I have my virtual assistant that puts them up on YouTube for me. Right. And you could do a longer one. And that's where the longer one turns into patient presentations that I call it. Right. Um, sure. And then the last thing would be to do a webinar. Mm -hmm. Those are the things I've been doing recently. Um, so let me, let me show you something here. Um, you can see that screen right there. Yeah. So what I was talking about is this. So for example, um, these are my video ideas. And so this is just a reminder to ask for a question at the end of my video. But for example, I, I set them all up with the same template on Google. I have like so many here, it takes some time. But like I have a patient, I had a patient. So in my EMR, I took a picture of this. Yes. And they asked me this question. And I figured, well, if they had this question, a lot of people would have the question. So I put the question here and I always use the same colors. I take the image and I paste it in here. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll just talk about this. I'll pull this up full screen and I'll do the same thing like in Zoom and I'll record it. And, it'll, and I'll just ask, is this nail trauma or a melanoma? Um, here's another patient I had. You know, you can't do anything about a toe fracture, to, true or false. And basically, this was a before and after how this was mistreated and it, it kind of comminuted. And so just these little things, not take a bigger picture of it. Um, so was this your, were those your patients? Yeah, and I just took them, but there's no identifiers. Right. So we can just take our own patients, just not just cut yeah. their name out and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I have a lot of patients during the pandemic, they've been sitting on their butt a lot. So I thought, well, I could do a little... Thing about pandemic plantar fasciitis how people are sitting on their butts a lot and they're getting tight and they're getting plantar fasciitis yeah so those are just that's how i think and so i i just basically if i have an idea during the course of treatment i'll do this okay i see now once a month it's called newsletter cmp so central mass podiatry my newsletter so each month i send a video newsletter because i don't like to write a newsletter but i like to do newsletters so i do a video newsletter and uh, this is just another picture of a patient cutting out a shoe. But the last one I just did was in September. And um, the newsletter, we talked about, this is the webinar I did with my, with my other three docs called All About Plantar Fasciitis. And I put a replay link on it. The diagnosis of the month, I just kind of pick a diagnosis and talk a little bit about it. We're doing a print doctor's newsletter and I put a link to that and then how to stay off your foot. So I, I basically pull this up. I say, this is what we talked about in our webinar. This is the link on our website. This is FHL tenosynovitis. This is our newsletter. And this is how to stay off your foot after surgery. So like this is a newsletter that I do once a month and I send this out to all my patients. And then you can also put that on your website for content. Right, I see. So that's the way I set that up. And the thing I'm really proud about are these things. This is called my patient presentation. So everything is in alphabetical order. And so Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, but really the ones that you really need that take me a long time to explain are plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, and forefoot pain. Everything else is real easy to explain. Yeah, more, more, the rest of it's kind of cut and dry. Yeah. There's four but, options called a day. Yeah, for Achilles tendonitis, this is the stuff now I've, I'm on the, like the third rendition of this. Okay. So I, I, when someone comes in, I used to go through all these slides with them, but now I have a video that I make them watch. So I've recorded this. Like I told you, I recorded it into a 10 minute video 
And when they come in, I'll do the x-ray. I'll look at their foot. I'll make them walk. And then I'll say, Mrs. Jones, I'm going to have you watch this 10 minute video. I go see another patient. And then I come back and I, and I go through some of these things. Oh, wow. So I talk about this, the anatomy, what causes it, gastroc, gait, posture, heel spur. And then this is the checklist. This has really been my, my saving grace. And I always come back to this. This is, I get 99% of my patients better with this. And so the first time I pick a few things and I have actually a little checklist in my pocket. I'll show you in a second, but this is how I do it. And then if I want to go into depth, I'll go into it about shockwave, about amnio, about anti-inflammatories, but I, I don't have enough time to do this anymore. So I actually have it in the video and the video goes through all of this with them. Right. So, um, and then what I, what I do in my hand, I have a little, it's called a foot treatment checklist. So basically I just, I write it down their name, what they're going to do. And I give this to them. And then when they come back, I'll give them a, another one. So this kind of reinforces it. And then I use this thing called patient education genius to send them. I send them a link to the video. I send them, you know, a link to Amazon to buy stuff. I'll, you know, send them how to buy shoes, my shoe buying guide. So it's just a lot of this stuff. I send them electronically. I used to do printouts. I don't do any printout. I have videos on how to do foam rolling. Cause I, I like foam rolling more than stretching and stuff like that. So that's working really for me for, I, I try to make use of things over and over again. And I try to save me time. So one way to save time is I, because a plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, and like capsulitis, metatarsalgia, takes me time to explain because there's so darn many options. So that's why I use this video. I make them watch the video and then I go see another patient. Then I come back. And it took me courage to do that because in the beginning, I'm like, are they going to like that? Shouldn't I be spending time? But what I found is if I'm running 30 minutes behind, you know, the Achilles patient got the five minute explanation. If there was no one after them, they got the 20 minute explanation. So my explanation was based on how much time I had for them. Right. But yes. now they get a great presentation every single time because I recorded it and I send them a copy so they can, because they can watch it again. Yeah, because that's probably, you're right. The longest time is listening to them in the beginning and giving the answers at the end. Yeah. Right. So those, are some things, those are some things that have worked for me. So I don't right. know. I'll be happy to share any, any of those or all those if it would help. Sure. That sounds great. Yeah. I like the, uh, like the video things and the Google slides is a good idea. And, you know, you're doing the content, writing something up, like you said, I think that's really great ideas. Yeah. I, I, the key is you just have to make use of downtime. That's the way I think of it. Like I have like five minutes between patients. That's where I try to produce content. Right. I don't want to take time from my kids or at night or on the weekends. I don't do any of this stuff at that. And then when I get frustrated, that's where I figure out, well, who can I pay to do this? Can I pay someone 30 bucks or 50 bucks and have an ebook done? You know, it's, it's worth it. Cause I'm going to rack my brain trying to figure out how to do it and get frustrated. And uh, I don't want to do that. I used to do that all the time. Right. right. Well, I know that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, <laughs> spend an hour every night and do it. No, I'd rather just spend an hour and watch a TV show, yeah. you know? And, and pay someone uh, to do it. Yeah, that, that's that, that, like that, uh, what's it called? Fiber or whatever. That's a great idea. Yeah. Dictate it, let them put it together. And so you pay guys 50 bucks. It's well worth it. Yeah, on my, on the Podiatry Practice Mastery, on that membership thing, it's all written in there. It's under Fiverr or under virtual assistant. All the links that you need are right in there. And my presentations, the patient presentations are all in there too. Mm -hmm. So they're all there for free. I put them all right there. Um, eventually, free? yeah, well, I don't know. I haven't learned how to charge for it yet. So you better get it. Well, I'm in Canada, so it's, it's gotta be at least 25% less because of the dollar, right? So there you go. So you will you look at it and tell me how much I should charge people? And then, then I'll start charging people. But I just, I'm passionate about this stuff. I like this stuff. Right. You could charge people. I mean, there's no question. I have looked at some of your stuff. And I mean, it's definitely, you could charge. I mean. In, in the membership there? Did you look at the membership stuff in there? I think so, yeah. You just wrote down memberships. Not, it's not always free or something like that. Isn't that what yeah. you wrote down? Yeah. So, so that last week no i think it's it, 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 it's good i mean it's nice that you put it there but i mean i think not a lot of people know about it i mean i am present as i as i am past president of cpma and uh i am in charge of member benefits but 
I wouldn't want to, I want you to make something out of it if you were going to do something like that. I don't yeah, think. well, the, the, th the, thought, right. the thought is, the thought is, is to like eventually have something that's of enough value that it could be one of these recurrent things like $50 a month to be part of the the membership or something. That's eventually where it'll go. But I think I'm, that's just, great. I'm just like everyone else. I'm time strapped right now to, to push it to the next level, you know? Right. And, and, and what would Google say that, okay, if you did it, but doesn't have to be different than what the mine. I mean, mine would be different because it's a little bit more Canadianized and yours is more US eyes. Like PRP would be on the list, but it would not be the first choice. Uh, amniotic fluid, because they have to pay for it here. I don't know what here they too. do. Here too. Yeah. Um, no, so your slides, what I, my thought about the slides is you could download the slides, put them in your order and delete the ones you don't want and up right. to your, redo your checklist. So. You know, it's, it's, I, the only reason I use Google is because it's easy for me to do it. And you can look at mine. You just can't edit mine. You, you only have access to view, so you can download them for now and, and edit them and uh, play around with them till you get confident with them. Sure. That'd be great. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then uh, that'd be fun to do like how to do that uh, interview video type of thing that you're talking about. Yeah, we can, we can schedule another time. And you sure. just pick another timeout, and then what we'll do is, I'll record you, and then I'll send you the transcript. Okay. And so basically, okay. I'll say, "Hey, Joseph, tell me about plantar fasciitis," and you'll right. go through your whole spiel, and then it'll be transcribed, and then you'll send it to the um, right. to I, the fiber, I, fiber person. And sure. then you then you get your first book on plantar fasciitis. All right. And what, better what my works, week, right? what works better what works better the, the how uh, it was a progression let me tell you so yeah. what happened initially is i did the presentation the powerpoint right let's call it a powerpoint and i talked through the powerpoint well then all i did is i took the transcript and the powerpoint slides and i put and i pasted them into a book that's how the book came about i right. talked then i put the slide i was talking about i talked then i took the slide i was talking about that's why i think the slides make it so much easier to talk because it guides your conversation. I agree, because I did a, well, I've done it a few times. I did a talk for our national, um, for the insurance companies, you don't always need an orthotic. Mm -hmm. You should have to check that out. It's actually not a bad one. And uh, so it's done for all the insurance companies and uh, it's on there. And, uh, or I can send you a PowerPoint. And um, it's quite interesting because basically it was uh, Blue Cross between you and I, well, this is recorded, so I can't actually tell you why. <laughs> They wanted me to talk about it because there's certain groups that probably shouldn't be doing orthotics. And mm. uh, so they just wanted me to show how difficult it is to, it's not just an orthotic. You have to make a diagnosis. You have to try treatments and get through that whole thing. And one group came up to me at the end of the uh, lecture and said to me, so it's a rule that you have to have a grinder in your office. Yeah. I'm like, well, it's not a bylaw. But we're taught that you should have gonna, yeah. the access, at least the access to a grinder. Like in my satellite clinic, I don't have it, but I can take that back to my office, grind it, and bring it back the next time. So it doesn't have to go to the lab for two weeks or something like that. I mean, I'll tell you a funny story. One person who used this lab that I used to, uh, um, that I was using before, they called up the lab. The guy was telling me they called up the lab and said, hey, this orthotic doesn't fit why does it fit so the guy actually wasn't that far away he had to go nearby his office so he went by that office and goes all right the extension was too long they didn't know how to trim it they didn't know that they had to could trim the extension yeah so it was kind of like showing the difficulty the biomechanical the listening the examination that this you know it's not just as certain groups will just okay like gps rx orthotics is not really prescription orthotics correct like, they get away with that here because insurance companies will kind of allow it but technically it's wrong because you don't write down rx penicillin you give out milligrams and how much you take it so with the orthotics you're supposed to write down two degrees of varus or a heel hole or a met pad that's the prescription more so it's kind of a weird thing but insurance companies know it's wrong but they allow it for the other for the lesser trained people not for us obviously we can diagnose and prescribe. A lot of groups cannot do, most other groups can't do that. Hmm. You know, thinking about mar marketing and if you like orthotics, what you do is you take that PowerPoint, you tweak it a little bit, and then you record it and you make your own book 
on why everyone doesn't need orthotics or why everyone does, or, you know, you can right. do the same thing. Re repurposing content, I think is key. You don't have to make a new presentation. You can modify that and make it for your public. Yeah, I guess, cause I did it. So I did it as a, is the, um, the PowerPoint. And then I did it as, um, did it as a PowerPoint and then I repurposed it and wrote it as a blog, but I guess, sure. Then I could actually do it as a, a video thing and that would probably be really good as a video because that's kind of like so some of my lectures like i did a lecture on i'm part of sport med a local group sport med bc sport med british columbia and uh it's my buddy who's um um and so i did we had two of us had to do talks and one was a psychologist and one was me and so i had to talk about like heel pain uh like calcaneal apophysitis and so, yeah, I could probably just take those and that's what you're saying. And, and like, if you're doing one on sports meds, it might be six or seven topics. So what you do is you record the whole thing and then you have an editor cut out each individual section. So one's on apophysitis, one's on Achilles tendonitis, one's on, so you have six or seven videos off right. of that. You could do one main book about sports medicine. That would be your book. And then you could have individual little videos. So like there, it's, it's limitless how you can make content as long as you have the right who. The yes. who is the person to do all that stuff that you don't know how to do or don't want to learn how to do. Right. So I think that would be good. Yeah, because I have lectures. So I can just take my lectures. That's a good, that's a great point. Modify those or re-up them because some of them were done a couple of years ago, whatever. And then, like you said, then the video part. And then if your patients, like they want to know you're an authority. So you put that on your site. But also what I do with this patient education genius is I actually... I actually send them a copy of the video. They like to know that. And you could put it, a video in your newsletter. You could send out a video to all your patients. Hey, I did, I asked, you know, here's a copy of it if you want to watch it. So there's a lot but of ways you can do it. Because of you, I did contact Peg. Oh, he, good. And yeah. um, so it, it, he gave me a link for me to try it. Actually, I was going to call them, uh, yeah. I was going to call them this afternoon, but uh, they gave me a link to, to, to try it out myself because they can't do it in Canada because they don't, well, they're working with a certain, uh, ethnic, yeah. yeah. So he says like for them to do some stuff, he gave me a link that I could do it and try it out. But he also said, well, if you can get your association to go on this, then he'll make it that they can use it in Canada. It's not that I can't use the act fast and all that kind of stuff. So that's what you sent out is the act fast stuff. No, I don't. Occasionally, you said your thing out. Oh, that's right. He said that. He said your thing out, which is like app fastest thing. Yeah, right. I, I said, well, I send my book, I'll send my videos. Right. I'll, I'll send, you know, stuff like that. Whatever, whatever you really give people. Yeah. And, right. and what I've learned is I don't send them tons of crap. I used to send them tons. Now I put everything on one web page and I just send them that one web page where they can get everything. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So that's what you, so I'm working on that right now. Trying to cheap, cheap money for, and the cool thing is you get all these reviews from them too. That's the main key with peg. Right. Everyone. Then, my one question about that is, and I actually got to get to work because I have to be there in 20 minutes, but my one question is, do you send out your request for a five-star rating or two-star rating the first appointment or not till like later once you kind of treated them and they're happier? So a peg so there's two different ways of doing this right peg doesn't ask for a five-star rating what they do is when i send them content it has a chat bot in the chat bot simply asks did you have a good experience if they say yes then it says would you mind giving me a review that's how peg works right. i don't send out the link for this asking them for a review it, it, it's it's incorporated into it now on my last visit what I ask is I say, hey, Mrs. Jones, just so you know, we don't just do nails. We do heel pain, surgery, everything else like that. Love to see some of your family. And by the way, did you ever do an online review for me? It would really help me. And, and, and this is always the last visit because I'm not going to see them anymore. And if they haven't done it, then I said, you know, I'm going to send you this link. And then I'd like, I'd like you to do that because that's how a lot of our patients come. Right. So you kind of, oh, so the first one's not really asking for you. Just was it, was it a good visit and experience or not? Exactly. And, and if they had a good one, they can, it'll ask them to give a review automatically. It's, it's like a, it does, I don't tell them, they just, it just does it automatically. Okay. So that's why it's probably better to have like your little checkbox go with that because then it shows you, because they always say, they always forget, how, most people forget half the stuff you told them. 
So if you had that little checkbox or a little, okay, we had, we're going to do taping and. Well, yeah. So I, I, that's why I use this thing. Cause they're not going to remember all the stuff I send them. And this has really helped me. I don't know anyone else that does this, but what I have on here is x-ray ultrasound, MRI, cortisone, shockwave, amnio, anti-inflammatories, icing, foam rolling, PT, night splints, towel stretch. It's more the musculoskeletal. That's more complex. Right. And, and I give this to them because they can't remember Like they're not going to remember anything we say. Do you ever, did you ever do a video on like the exercises that they should do? I, I went to the, I used to do a TV program. So the TV program went to a physical therapy studio with me and I recorded how to do foam rolling, how to do the, the, the roller bar, how to do f- like trigger point tools, how to do all that stretching. I recorded okay. it all with them professionally and they gave me the videos. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's a good one to do. And you, you just go to a PT place and you have them be your guinea pigs and you, you walk them through how to do it or they walk you through. Who cares? You're there. Right. I mean, I think the big, the best ones for like a theater also is just the toe scrunching. The toe crunches, the towel stretch. Yeah, the things like increasing the intrinsics and stuff like that. And I send a lot of links as well. I send links to Correct Toes. I'll send links to Amazon. I send links to a lot of other websites that I believe in. For the Correct Toes, how young would you let a person go into Correct Toes? The kids, the only ones I give kids is when they have overlapping toes. Those are the only ones I do for kids. Otherwise, it's adults and up, 18 and up. So, yeah, because it was funny. I told this patient about it. Kids like two and a bit. And I just saw him. I hadn't seen him. Before. I saw him like after a month or two and gave her instructions on how to manipulate and space her and that. And we talked about correct toes and she actually went and bought it. It actually worked not bad after like six months. One foot's like 90% better and the other foot's a little bit less. But uh, And I'm a big advocate of like ultras and toe pose and lems, like anatomic shoe gear, because that's really the key for getting the correct toes to work is the shoes. Yeah. So even like a three-year-old's cool to wear a correct toe. If they, if they make them that small. Yeah. Well, it was a pretty ask, small you'd, have, you'd have to ask Ray. I interviewed Ray. He was a nice guy. I think he went, I think he was a few years ahead of me at my school. Did he go to Philadelphia? I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember, but. Do you know Doug Glaud? Yeah. How come I know Doug? I think I know. Uh, Cause he practices in your, he runs yeah. the uh, uh, residency. The residency in Rhode Island, is it? Well, he lives in uh, Rhode Island and pra- yeah. has a residency in Massachusetts in Boston. Yeah. So he was in my wedding party. Oh, I was in his wedding party. He was in my wedding party. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, we're very good, very good friends. And um, I mean, obviously we don't see each other a ton, but we're very good friends. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know, what I, as we're finishing here, Joe, um, if you have, I would love to, one, I'll send you the stuff that we talked about. Thanks. If you ever need a guest speaker, it would be so fun to go to Canada and speak about something like well, this. Doug's been here like three times. Yeah. So, yeah. If yeah, when we, we're, we're doing virtuals, but we're, we just, we're doing a virtual in a couple of weeks or in November. That's our second virtual. We actually had a really good response. We had 150 podiatrists across Canada. Yeah. And uh, and um, yeah, we did like a six hour virtual, but we can get you to do something. If, you, if, if that if that would be this sure. stuff, this is what I'm passionate about. And then um, third, if you have any other friends that we could, I could chat with, that would be fun too, just to about practice management or ideas or people that you might think would be interesting. I'm always looking for new people to talk to and meet. Absolutely. So yeah, let me think about that, which way. Okay. To- for that. I'll talk, uh, introduce you a friend of mine in Toronto. Talk to him about it. See what he has to say. We can get on a three-way and yeah. talk about stuff. We'll, we'll talk about whatever's, you know, hope I hope I gave you some tips here. Yeah, actually, you know, we'll do a, a, a hook with a friend in Quebec and a friend in Toronto and myself. And we can do like a three-way call one day and see if that works. Like a mastermind. You guys are on the same time zone except for me. So it's okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Nice to talk to you. Have a good one, buddy. Okay. Bye-bye.